Hey everyone, so in this screencast uh, I'm going to show you how you can install GitHub for Windows which is uh, basically a way to use the Git version control for your projects and uh, host them on GitHub. I haven't used, used this particular application before so we'll see how it goes. I've used Git of course on Linux from the command line but I have this, is, this will be the first time I'll be setting up Git in any form on Windows. So I'm on Windows 7. This is the URL windows.github.com. Um, it has a lot of good things to say about itself. Uh, let's get started. So I'll just click on the download. The setup file is downloading. Uh, it's not really big. It's about 700 KB. So it shouldn't take too long. 16, 15. Ah, uh, it's, it's taking a while. Okay, uh, let it download in the background and we'll just take a... Well, there's not really much to look around here because... Well, still, let's see, let's see what do you have in help. So... Of course, there's a bit of help here. He says we to get um, mm -hmm. fully into a couple of. Hmm. Okay, we'll try and explore a uh, few things from here. Let's let's just go ahead and okay. The setup uh, has completed downloading, so let's just start. All right, and just select run. Oops, something died. Hmm. Okay, something went wrong. <laughs> Not sure what. Okay, no, it's starting. So something was going on. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so do you want to install this application named GitHub from GitHub dot Windows stream, uh, yeah sure install. Okay, so it's uh, downloading. So that was really the bootstrapping application. So this is really doing the download, which is about thirty eight MB. Okay, let it. Well, it finishes. Um, so this is adding repository. So you can add a repository already in your hard drive by dragging a folder in from the explorer. Um, okay. So a few things like if it's already a Git repository, it'll import all the history and connect it to your GitHub accounts, or you can directly clone them from GitHub.com. Look for the clone in Windows button. It obviously has shell integration. Mm -hmm. So there seems to be a lot of goodies out here. branches setting up here of thar and of course well, well really the nothing fancy the basic stuff but really looks amazing let's see uh, it's still downloading uh, si since we are here uh, one of the really great resources to learn about book is the git scm book which is freely available for download i'll just um, search for it uh, okay so it's git scm.com slash book great book um if you're just starting with git uh, it would be like the fu the first two chapters would really be well not first two so first chapter is obvious second you need yeah the first three chapter is something which you really need to know it's really awesome like Scott Chapman does a great job in fact he has also a number of videos up on this website so he introduces what is version control what is good get going and you know few basic things there's really good videos I which I recommend you to check it check out um, and of course there is a reference and of course um, so let's see how far hard, hard it's done. Oh, okay it's almost done it's about 31 MB
That's 84 bliss and oh, okay. Okay, that took a while, but looks like we are done. The installer has disappeared. Uh, hmm, probably that's about it, I think. Oh, okay, so we have got a new menu item. Uh, so it should also be here as well. And of course, it's pinned to the start menu, so I'm just going to click on it. Again, it's taking a while. Okay, so it's doing a few things like extracting Git. So it probably, so yeah, it of course has a copy of Git. So it's doing a few things in the background. Let's get, let's see. Oops, we have got two copies. I think one of the copies was started automatically after the installation. Yeah, I shouldn't have started the one which I did manually oops okay <laughs> okay so I'm just going to close one of them should start on its own I was just being a little too enthusiastic I guess there going to close it okay all right so if you already have a github account or if you don't have just go and create one I already have so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to enter my details here oops it's going a little unresponsive okay yeah I think we are back okay so my username uh, oops, okay my password I do login and as you can see I have been logged in this is my uh, this will be using the commits you create so if you if you're familiar with git you know it needs a user username and a email so I'm just going to um, uh, just just do just do whatever it so it's the default one so just to continue to get started so I don't have any I haven't really imported any local repositories um, I'm just going to skip. Let's refresh. I think my remote repositories might be pulled in here. Not really. Yeah. Okay, of course. Um, so this is probably just for refreshing the set of local repositories. Uh, let's see what we have before we go ahead and create a uh, pull in our okay so here we go so once I click on my username I can see all my repositories like the ones which are already okay, I'm just going to maximize it which already exist on github so let's say you know the okay so this is a repository I've been using recently for putting all my article sources source code and everything so as you can see there's a clone well, not really a button, but a text which says clone. If I click on it, it's probably, it's probably, not probably, it's creating a local clone of the repository. And it has been copied to this particular location. See users, Pratusha, documents, GitHub, notes. So I'll just, let's, let's just go there and see what we have. So see... Oops, I forgot where it was. <laughs> uh, okay, C users. Okay, C users. That's where I need to go. Users. Tusha. Documents. Where are you? Uh, okay. No. Where is it? Sorry about that. Yeah, it should be there. I'm, I don't know why I can't see it. No, it's not there. Well, it should be there. I just can't see. Wow. Interesting. 
I just don't see that file here. Ha, huh, it's actually my GitHub users Pratusha my documents GitHub. So that's a bug. <laughs> it should have told me my documents. Anyway, I probably am going to report that. Okay, so we have my documents, GitHub, and here you see all my. So these are my files which was in there in that repository. So I can pr just say start this file. Uh, Windows obviously doesn't so all restructured text files. I'm going to edit with Notepad plus plus. Various lens, and I'm just going to delete the full stop, and that's I'm going to save. So that's my change. What I'm now going to do is just see if I can commit the change from here. Uh, of course, I don't see such any information here. Okay, so let's just go to github.windows. Oh, okay, so I could have opened an explorer here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I could have directly opened the directory from here itself. Hmm, that was really easy, of course. Okay, so how do I commit the changes? That's the point now. Hmm, okay, so here you go. So as you can see, so I'll just show it to you again. I click on this, I go to the open this repo, so as you can see it shows me the diff which is really the difference of the file, the local file from what exists on the remote branch of the remote copy. I'm just going to say a minor fix. I'm going to do the, this is the commit message, you could give more descriptive ones here. I'm just going to do a commit. So it's unsynced because it hasn't been pushed. If you really want to go into the Git terminology, I'm just going to do a sync. And uh, this is what, so it's syncing this local repo with the remote repo. If you already know Git, this would be the equivalent of Git push. And the syncing is over and it says in sync so let's just go ahead and check on my uh, on the github homepage, on github repository page and as you can see the change has been committed and this is my commit message so that's really cool so we have just set up github uh, cloned a repository locally made a change and just pushed it back really cool uh, we'll continue exploring github for windows in the next screencast